If you're a cinematographer, you need to just use LUTs. I'm kidding. I'm, this video is not about LUTs, I promise. This is the cinematographer's Bible. This is all the most important tips that I've learned through years of shooting from my documentaries and commercials jam-packed into one video. I've been lucky enough to work with some incredible cinematographers over the years. We've been nominated for Best Cinematography up against some pretty incredible commercials. And so I'm taking all that knowledge from those cinematographers, confining it, jamming it into this video. So let's do it. First tip is movement should be motivated. Just because you can move a shot because you own a gimbal doesn't mean the shot should be moving. Some of the best films out there are entirely locked off. I'm thinking of one of my favorite films, Some Kind of Heaven by Lance Oppenheim, almost exclusively locked off shots. If you're always moving the camera, movement in your film is no longer unique. It's like playing the same song throughout your entire film or increasing the volume of your sound mix to the highest level. Contrast, diversity, helps your film. Maybe you can set up some rules in your film about this. The show Mad Men only moved the camera when someone was moving around the frame. If people were sitting, the camera was not moving. Or classically, if you need to dolly into someone, it's saying that something important is happening in their brain, or this is an important part of the film. But if you're always moving, we won't know what is important. The next point is you should study the image more than you should study the gear. There is so many videos on YouTube about the latest camera and all its buttons and camera settings when there should be more content around the image quality. I'm not just saying how much resolution or is this S-log or C-log. No, I'm saying what does your camera image do? Do you know how your camera performs in low light? Specifically, how it does in 400 ISO or 3000 ISO? Do you know things like that your Sony camera isn't great at handling the yellow channels that you want to understand expose yellow, at least in my experience, when I do my color correction, I find I need to be aware of that. Do you know how your camera reacts to certain LUTs? If you don't, then when you take it to post-production, it's going to be a crapshoot. You'll be guessing. You're gonna thank yourself as a cinematographer. Knowing is half the battle. And knowing is half the battle. Next point is get the counter shot or what we traditionally call the reaction shot. If you're not shooting the people listening in your documentary, commercials, feature films, you're missing half the film. The person talking is only half as important as the person listening. So even at the end of a documentary shoot, if you have one camera, spend some time just getting the person to listen to the other person talking. It doesn't even have to be about the exact thing, or you can ask them to repeat what they were just saying so you can actually get the reaction. This will help you in the edit, and it will make for a very dynamic film. This is what good cinematographers know, and they will get this coverage always. They're dying. If you know how to take care of tropical plants, please send me a DM on Instagram and we'll do a FaceTime. And yes, they do get sunlight, just not what I'm filming. I need to save my plants. But let's talk about today's sponsor, and that's Storyblocks. And you may be wondering why I'm talking about Storyblocks in a cinematography video. Well, they're actually the perfect sponsor. You see, you may not always have the time or resources to get specific shots that you need for your projects. I ran into this issue on my film Mile by Mile. We were out filming and I forgot to bring the drone. So in the edit, we didn't have an opening shot, but I was actually able to find this really cool shot over on Storyblocks, which fit even better for the film. The same thing happens on my YouTube channel. I need aerial shots to illustrate points or for transitions. I just don't have the time to run down to the city and spend four hours getting permits and sending my drone up to get shots of the city. When I can just rip over to Storyblocks and in a matter of minutes find the perfect aerial at sunset that I can throw into my edit. Their video library is insane, especially their aerial cinematography. They have so many different cities covered. So whether you've been doing cinematography for over a decade like me, or you're just starting off, Storyblocks can actually really help you when you're needing those last few shots to fill in and help elevate your project. Or if you hate After Effects like me, well, really, I'm just not good at it. They have an amazing selection of graphics and lower thirds that can help any of your projects. Storyblocks library is huge. It's over a million royalty-free assets. They even have an editing platform so you can build your content on their website. Make sure to check out Storyblocks and sign up for their unlimited all access plan. Now back to cinematography. This video is brought to you by Airy. No, it's not. I paid way too much money for this mug from Germany. Quick bonus tip. Every cinematographer should have a good monitor on set. I'm not sponsored by Small HD, but if you're like, monitors are too expensive, they did just come out with this Action 5 monitor. Two things you want in a monitor. 
false colors and LUTs. I'm always monitoring the S-Log footage with a LUT overlaid on top of it. And the Action 5 is fairly affordable. Last couple points, more gear does not equal better footage. Some of the best films that have come out recently have been with crews and with camera packages that are very tiny. I mentioned Some Kind of Heaven earlier. They had two lenses for that and four people on set. The Academy award-winning best film, Nomadland, again, sound person, camera, camera assistant, director, small crew, Alexa, couple lenses. Keep it simple. My Tornado Project, I had one lens, my FX6 package, keeping it simple. Whatever's gonna help you tell the better story. My biggest mistake when I started off early in my career is I would get as much gear as possible because I thought more tools meant more capability to create a better shot. And in turn, I didn't know how to use half of it and I would get overwhelmed. I stopped even using gimbals and steady cams because I didn't know how to use them. Get rid of all the extra gear that you don't know how to use. Go practice it when you're not filming your movie. Point number five, know your camera angles and framing and what they communicate. Low angle equals power. It can express that someone is bigger, taller, stronger emotionally, or perhaps they're an antagonist. A high angle, looking down, this is diminishing. This makes people feel small. Wide angle, this equals lonely and lost. You're by yourself in a big frame, but you're tiny. Tight angle, this is intense when you move in really tight on someone's face, like right now, this. Saving tight angles for intense moments can emphasize the emotion for that scene. Next is still a tight shot, but it's cramped. It's poorly framed. You have someone over to the corner. This is a way to express that someone is uncomfortable or doesn't want to be in that space. You're not comfortable watching the shot, and so it's expressing that neither are they. A Dutch frame, this equals chaos, danger, often in horror films. Pushing in says importance. Something important is happening. We're arriving somewhere. Pulling out, this is leaving the scene. We're saying the story is going somewhere new or perhaps ending. And my last point is one big soft light is better than three small lights. Why do I say this? I used to buy more smaller pieces of gear because I could afford them. I thought, can I build up a collection of lights when really what I should have been doing is saving up for one giant light. This lighting setup is not that complex. I have one big soft light here. It's an Aperture 300D. And then above me, I have a tiny little Pavo tube from Nan Light. And then I got this lamp and I went on Amazon and bought really low bulbs. It's not actually that bright, so it can be in the shot. If you're gonna buy one light, save up your money to buy the biggest, softest light you can that you could also travel with. So there you go, guys. That is my cinematographer's Bible. I hope you watch this before you go shoot your next project. This is all the knowledge. Well, there's a lot more knowledge. And if you want all that knowledge, go check out the Art of Documentary. We have 100 videos there. That's where I can really get into the nitty gritty. But for the purposes of this YouTube video, this is some of my best tips. I hope you enjoyed them. If you made it this far, leave your favorite camera emoji. It can be any of these. Aries from Germany. Guten Tag. I mean, hello. What's goodbye? <laughs>